The idea behind this fighter is simple. If you want a heavy hitter that can punch above its weight class, you build the whole thing around a supersized weapon. And the Crusader Ares Ion Starfighter says that should be a size 7 laser cannon, dishing out pain and punishment. This ship has also been the centre of plenty of controversy in its short life, but that aside for a moment, how does it actually perform in-game right now? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Crusader Industries Ares Ion Starfighter, which is described as a heavy fighter. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then you probably know what to expect, with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it, so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. And moving around to the rear of the Ares Ion, right at the back of the ship there is a small box for entering into the ship's storage inventory, as well as slightly ahead of that, a small weapons locker for personal weapons. And that's most of the interesting things around this ship for pilot interaction. Otherwise, we walk around to the left or port side at the front of the ship in order to deploy the ladder to get into the cockpit. The armament of the Ion is fairly simple to explain. It's one great big size 7 laser cannon, and that's it. You point, you fire, and you start whittling away at the enemy. It's designed to engage larger enemy ships, and it does that fairly well. The damage over time is fairly strong, and the capacitor gives you a fair amount of damage before charge, and a fairly quick charge. The Ion is less effective against smaller targets, mostly because it's harder to consistently land shots against a fast moving target. The Ion is further armed with a generous complement of missiles, including by default 20 size 3 missiles of various description. It's possible to swap out some, but not all of those missiles, by changing some of the launchers. Sadly, one launcher is fixed to 12 size 3 missiles, but that's okay, as size 3 offers a good balance of being able to engage smaller and larger targets. The overall combat performance for the Ares Ion, in its intended use case of engaging medium to large targets, is actually fairly strong. Those larger targets are fairly easy to keep in the sights of the Ares, and the sustained damage from that large cannon whittles away the health pools. And with two size 2 shield generators to defend the ship, you get a fair defensive performance for a heavy fighter, on a par with the Vanguard series. Looking at visibility, the Ares Ion has a lot to offer. The cockpit is sat right at the front of the fighter, and offers great views all around, but particularly to the front, where your prey is likely to be. In terms of handling, the Ares probably looks more sleek than it is. It's not slow by any means, and compares favourably to many of the ships it will be likely to face, but isn't as nimble as a light fighter. And you do get that heavy fighter feeling of drift when you throw it through a turn. The SCM speed of 170 meters per second, and the top speed of 1120 meters per second are both lower than many other fighters, which draws attention to the fact that this is a big game hunter. The big engines at the back help give the Ares Ion a good boost, although it's worth adding that she's a little slower to brake than to accelerate. The stock quantum drive is the Crossfield, which is a pretty decent choice. It's fairly quick and has a considerable range, able to cross the Stanton system three or four times before having to stop for fuel. Across refueling and repairing the Ares, costs are fairly cheap, usually into the hundreds or low thousands of Alpha UEC. 
if you fire off the missiles, that can get a little more expensive, probably into the thousands, but still a lot less than you're likely to be making. It'll not be a surprise for most pilots that combat contracts will be the mainstay for making money with the Ares Ion, and this Starfighter is especially well tailored for the high-end, most profitable ship combat missions. And that's good news, as there's no place to store cargo or delivery boxes, so for the most part that's how you might expect to use this ship. In terms of loadout changes for the Ares Ion, I'd suggest swapping out the size 3 missiles that you can swap for size 5 Stalker torpedoes, to help with those larger targets. And probably to consider upgrading the Crossfield Quantum Drive to an XL1, if you find yourself travelling around the system a lot. And if you're really getting into it, swapping out the shield generators for FR-76s, but that's about it. So the Ares Ion has previously proved controversial, mostly because of nerfs since initial implementation, and expectations not matching up to actual performance. For this review, we'll be sidestepping that, not because those aren't valid concerns, but because it's much easier to talk about actual in-game performance. This is a Starfighter, and that is all about fighting, and in particular fighting larger ships. And that shows in the performance. It's not the optimal way of dealing with enemy fighters, but does great to break through the defences of middleweight opponents like a Constellation or Freelancer. And given that combat contracts at the moment skew the highest profits to the biggest targets, that's good news for the Ares Ion. She's also able to stick around and fight for longer than her sister, the Inferno, owing to the fact that the weapon is charged on a capacitor with theoretically infinite, not to mention free, ammunition. The Ion is fairly easy to fly, helped by her slower speed, and also looks absolutely fantastic. But for players looking for a dogfighter, this probably isn't the ship for you. The Ion is too slow, and fires too slowly to keep up. All of which brings us to price. At $200, or just shy of 3 million Alpha UEC in-game, the Ares Ion is an expensive fighter. The in-game price isn't bad value per se, as the Ion is capable of hitting against the heaviest of combat opponents, but it is expensive, so probably only really lends itself to players interested in the highest echelons of combat, who only want a ship for that purpose. And it is a little cheaper than the Eclipse, which is another popular ship choice for high-end missions, so maybe an attractive option. The real money price is still pretty expensive, and some of the marketing material may be a little fanciful. For example, talking about eradicating a smaller ship in seconds might leave a sour taste in some players' mouths. Or the artwork, which all shows this tiny, single-seater fighter squaring up against an Idris, I must admit, I'm a little doubtful that's how the engagement would play out. But against the right targets, the Ares Ion is a good, solid choice. Great for dishing out consistent damage over longer engagements. But I'll be interested to know, especially given the controversial background of this ship, what do you think of the Ares Ion? You can share your thoughts in the comments. And once again, if you're not yet subscribed, you really might consider it if you've got this far, as I have a few more Star Citizen ship reviews you can expect over the coming months. It'll also be really helpful if you press that like, or dislike button, to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most, so I can tailor them to you. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.